I'm your host, Eric Eisenberg. We're going to Hero Blend number 56. Marvel's Daredevil isn't set to drop on Netflix until next week, but we recently got an early look at the first five episodes, and this show is going to be dedicated to our spoiler free review. Check it out. Welcome back, everyone. I am very excited to have once again on the show from Coming Soon, Superhero Hype, and Most Craved, Mr. Silas Lesnick. How's it going, buddy? How's it going? Uh, so we have an exciting thing to talk about. I feel like I say that every single week, but Daredevil is coming, and we got to see the first five episodes, and I'm flabbergasted, man. That is the word that I am choosing to use as a description for this show. I, I was I was really impressed. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's different than anything we've seen from Marvel. It's... Uh... The episodic nature of it is kind of what is really exciting because even we saw Agent Carter over ten episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a different kind of uh, just straight through narrative. Yeah, exactly, and especially I mean the Netflix uh, like binge watching format. Uh, obviously, I mean as mentioned, we only got to see the first five episodes, uh, but I, I mean I watched them straight on through. And it is really, each one is its own episode, but it's also constantly building towards a larger narrative, and it really is a different kind of perspective on a superhero narrative that we just haven't seen yet. And I'm curious to see how it continues uh, beyond those five, simply because uh, it, it has uh, some elements of uh, sort of something like The Wire, where like each season it expands, but episode by episode, we're seeing a bigger part of this world, mm-hmm. and we're seeing a, a, a darker side of New York that... <laughs> Right now, only a little bit feels like the Marvel Universe. It's really a Daredevil story right now. I'm honestly impressed by that. That is something I actually do want to talk about. Um, there are constant references to the Battle of New York, obviously, um, like being set in Hell's Kitchen. This has got to be an area that's affected by that. But really, tonally, there is absolutely nothing connecting this show to the Marvel Universe because it is dark. It is so like I know that we were we were we've been prepared for months with like the show with Stephen Tonight and Jeff Loeb telling us that this show is going to be dark. This show is dark, <laughs> and 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 I, and I think it's it's a color that Marvel's trying out for the first time, and I think it's a massive success. I I I, I don't know, I guess I wouldn't say it's exceptionally dark in my mind. Like, okay, it, it's certainly darker than anything we've seen from Marvel. But it's I, not, I may be overselling like, it simply because it is so different. But uh yeah it. it I don't know the the, the uh, one of the really great things about it I think is is uh, Vincent D'Onofrio as yes. the kingpin uh, who uh, even <laughs> even after the five I don't want to get get too much into yeah story, we can't get too like, much uh, into the details definitely but I am very curious to see see how his arc will progress I mm-hmm. I want to know if he's he's a villain that is the series villain or is he the season villain. Um, could he go and be in Spider-Man? Like, it yeah, is... exactly. And, and honestly, this is a character that I absolutely want to see stick around. Um, it, it's a performance that is... Uh, it's not overly boisterous. Uh, it, it, obviously, he's a larger-than-life character, but Vincent D'Onofrio plays it with this exceptional affectation. He's very kind of calm and nervous inside, but at the same time has this explosiveness within him. And it is fantastic. Fantastic to watch. It's it, one of the things the series does exceptionally well is is uh, finding these smaller stories. So every character has their own story, right? And they all tie to the bigger story in in some some sort of unexpected ways. Mm-hmm. Um, th- one of the other uh, great ones is uh, Rosario Dawson. Yes, who, uh, who we uh, we meet in the second episode, and really again is not really a character that we've seen in especially in superhero movies at the very least. She has a really fantastic dynamic with uh, Daredevil, uh, an interesting relationship that's unlike anything else on the show, uh, and she's great in it. And and is is great also just to give Daredevil somebody who he can talk to mm-hmm. that knows he's Daredevil, right? Uh, and doesn't know he's Matt Murdock. Right, exactly, and, and it's the complete. It's obviously the complete opposite of everything that we've of uh, the entire other side of his world, where everyone does know him as Matt Murdock, but no. Um, let's talk for a minute about choreography, um, specifically because Daredevil in the comics he is an elite fighter. He is going to be. I mean, the way that his his superpowers work, where he's aware of everything around him, his training through stick. Uh, this is a character who has to move, unlike any other character in the Marvel universe. I think they nailed it. I, I got to say the the choreography, especially there is there's a a fight scene that a lot of people will be talking about uh, pretty early on in the series. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's an understanding of the character that like I'm not even a fight expert. I, I don't know fighting styles right. that well, but I can tell that this is is somebody who said no. He was raised a boxer. 
treat it like he's a boxer first and foremost and it, it's great you feel that yeah exactly I mean the, the, I, I think I even wrote this in my review is that he's a brawler like he's a guy who will fight until his knuckles are bloody until his face he, he'll, he'll fight until he's hamburger to borrow a phrase from Fight Club um but and it, it is impressive to watch because it is a, something that comes down from his father. His we are introduced to Jack uh, Jack Murdoch uh, as being a fighter who never gets knocked out, who always uh, lost on his feet, and it reflects through the character so well. And uh, and it's amazing. And honestly, just Charlie Cox is just fantastic to watch move because he's just all over the place. He's so fast, and you just really believe him as this character. Yeah, and and you also believe the the law side of things. Mm-hmm. It, it's. Uh... The, the the law aspect of the show is sort of like a, a lawyer drama reminds me a lot of uh, Better Call Saul right now like <laughs> yes. uh, to the degree that like like I knew it'll never happen but I would love to see a crossover there um, and I mean and to kind of go to that point where you, you have the law side kind of grounding it um, which also is something that I find reflected in the entire series like this is a character who has a superpower uh, but weirdly it's I feel like this it's not necessarily a show that is all about its superpower. Like, mm-hmm. it, 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 obviously, Matt Murdock, uh, it, but it's 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 Matt Murdock having a superpower within him. But it's not like some, uh, at least within the first five episodes, it's not uh, a big origin story where he has to learn to train and hone his powers. But instead, he's just you're experiencing uh, the world from his perspective, that which is absolutely fantastic within the uh, within the photography. Um, but it's and it's just a, it really just kind of captures the naturality of the character, and it's fantastic. Absolutely, um, I, I I think tonally it, it reminds me actually of of the the current uh, Mark Wade run on Daredevil, yeah. which is is this really nice like sort of simplified half the time he's in the office, half the time he's he's a superhero. Um, it's just the look of it feels a bit like that, and yet we're getting a lot of the classic like Frank Miller stuff. Yeah, exactly, and, and, and that is, and, and like you can tell that that is built within it, uh, with both the uh, Man Without Fear and kind of just his uh, his run, uh, just with uh, when uh, he just took over the character. Um, Let's also talk about uh, to go in ha- in hand in hand with the choreography is the cinematography, which is uh, and this again goes back to the uh, fight that you referenced earlier. But one thing that I love about the show is that it's not afraid of one long one take shots, uh, like just tracking through. There are, I mean, I think I I think there are like three prime examples of the camera just constantly moving, not cutting, kind of just working within this environment, and it's beautiful. Like, I, it's unlike Agent Carter or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in that it's incredibly cinematic. Honestly, it reminds me of, if anything, uh, Hannibal. Yes, uh, absolutely. And, and, and including the opening credits. The opening credits are straight out of Hannibal, <laughs> yes. Uh, with, I mean, you, you guys obviously see it when the show comes online, but it's all about, like, dripping... It's about dripping red blood and... Well, it kind of looks like paint, but it, it's immensely stylistic and fantastic and really kind of sells everything that the show is. Um, Th- there's a couple characters, too, that uh, like I, I have been really impressed with, uh, including, and I, I don't remember the actor's name, but the guy playing uh, uh, Ben Urich. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, ben, no, uh, Condi Virtus Hall? I think, yeah, it's something like that. I feel terrible now, too. But, yes. <laughs> he's, he, he's really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, he creates a... Uh, you know, I I don't even as as as, as terrible as the uh, the previous Daredevil movie was. I didn't mind. Uh, <laughs> oh, Dope Handy! Yeah, like yeah. I, I, I thought he was fine. This guy like really gets it. Mm-hmm. Like uh, he he feels like a very weathered reporter, and uh, I don't know. There, there's uh, the other ones I really like. Uh, 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 Karen Page. Karen Page, uh, Deborah Ann Wall, who is you know, I mean. On paper, it wouldn't necessarily be a character that you... I mean, in the comics, she has a great run and she has a great relationship. But uh, honestly, the kind of the way the character starts out in the show, I wasn't necessarily sure because she starts out as a victim. She becomes... Uh, I, I, well, I don't want to give too much away. Uh, but she becomes an immensely strong character and she has a great narrative path just and, through those first five episodes. And you get so much range out of her as an actress uh-huh. that like knowing all of the possible directions from the comics they could take Karen Page in... Th- th- that's one of the characters I'm most excited to to see play Absolutely. out because a lot of stuff can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say the biggest surprise, yeah. uh, and I, I am uh, forgetting both the actors and the characters' name <laughs> is, but is uh, uh, Wilson Fisk's uh, right hand. Oh, man. Wesley, who I am also forgetting the last name. I'm forgetting the actor's name. Of, but yes, Wesley. He has like an appearance or two in Frank Miller's run on like mm-hmm. a panel. Uh, he's been expanded to very much the uh, the the. 
the right hand man, the guy that's doing a lot he, of the, the he's, he's kind of the voice of the kingpin. And honestly, that's another thing that they've that the show's done absolutely fantastically is kind of the setting up the atmosphere of the kingpin. Like this guy is set up as much more than just your standard kingpin of crime. It's he's a, essentially a god within the crime world, and it's bad. Like they don't say his name. Like that's a thing that's constant throughout, and it's it, it's a wonderful atmosphere the show to just dive into. It's completely believable from the very first moment. And yes, I think that uh, Wesley sells that to a perfect degree. Uh, we are running out of time. Silas, so hit me with your final thoughts, man. Uh, I, I just, I'm super excited. I can't wait to watch the next eight episodes. Uh, Spencer yeah. Perry on, on Super Hype wrote up our review, and I agree with every word of it. <laughs> Actually, I've read that review as well, and I completely agree as well. And you can check out my review on Cinema Blend. Um, I, again, I, I am also, I mean, I find it, I mean, there are eight episodes left. It's possible that it goes completely down the drain from this point forward i find that immensely hard to believe i am extremely excited for more of this show and i'm excited for all of you guys to see it uh silas thanks so much for being on the show with me thanks for having me and uh all of you i will see you next week have a good one